Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. Today you join me with quite a special car indeed. And no, I'm not on about the supercharged Hurricane over there or the GT3 RS behind me. I am of course on about the car in the middle, the Mark 8 Golf R. At last, we have one of these things on the channel and believe me, there's plenty of Mark 8 Golf R content coming your way very, very soon. As you see today, I'm here at Regal Autosport and back here visiting the guys here as this is their new development car, the Mark 8 Golf R. And they've kindly invited me to basically document the modification journey um, on here to you guys, which is all pretty exciting. Now, today's video is a bit of an introduction, and basically the plan is to, first of all, meet up with Ash here at Regal, have a run around the car before, I think, getting the car on the dyno to get a baseline before all of the modifications do go ahead. So quite an interesting video. The first Marquette Golf R on the channel, and one which is gonna be the start of quite an exciting series. So as I said, we'll introduce you to Ash here at Regal, and then we'll get this thing on the dyno to get a baseline figure before, basically, in the future, it starts getting pretty heavily modified. Okay, so we're now joined with Ash from Regal. Mate, it's good to catch up because it has been years. Yeah, it's been quite a while, isn't it? <laughs> it since has the last indeed. Video. I think the last time I was here, you probably had, well, it was your personal Mark 7 Golf R. Mark 7 had. Golf R, yeah. Um, so that's, that shows the, how uh, long ago that's been. Car. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, of course, the new Regal development car, mm -hmm. the Mark 8 Golf R. Um, you've had it for a little while, I understand? Yeah, weeks, so maybe? I think it's just come up to two weeks okay. yesterday. Yeah. So I've um, been pretty busy with it over you that have. time. Yeah. Obviously, um, we took it to track day. We've just done about 600 miles so far so i think on on like day four or five that we had it we literally took it to brands hatch um <laughs> indie circuit so did like an evening track session so two hours there so nice. obviously the tires are pretty pretty gone by now yeah, so yeah. Be getting some <laughs> how did it perform i'm um, really really well you know i'm um, like even driving it on the road it feels faster than like a mark 7 yeah it feels like in between sort of like a standard mark 7 like a tuned 7.5 with like okay. a gps yeah yeah um so it feels a lot stronger like power torque wise suspension feels a lot better Brakes feel a lot better, and obviously it's new design, new interior, stuff like that. So it feels yeah. like it is like a step up from the Mark 7. So I think a lot of people are gonna have a lot of fun in these cars, really. Definitely. I mean, they're flooding out now to customers. So mm -hmm. I think, well, hence the development car of your car, there's gonna be a lot of people modifying them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we're su super excited to get started with it, hence going on the track, like yeah, ASAP, <laughs> instantly. To get to grips with it, see what it's like, and start to, um, from like a performance point of view, start to like solve problems, see how to improve it, like how yep. to improve the driving experience and stuff for people. Awesome. No, it's going to be quite an interesting thing to follow, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so what are we looking at stock? Because I understand they're a bit more powerful than the 7 and 7.5. I think like 315 brake almost. Yeah, so um, PS and Newton meters, they're 316 PS and then 420 Newton meters of torque. Yep. And then in terms of horsepower, it's about 313 horsepower and about 310 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, awesome. So that's something to bear in mind when we have the car on the dyno. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure you, you guys have done a video already on mm -hmm. your channel. Um, they do run a little bit over, but I find that that's pretty common for, for Yeah, most I cars. mean, um, like Mark 7s will have on a dyno, they make anywhere between sort of like 300 to 320 horsepower. Yep. Depending on um, sort of like what year they are, their condition, what fuel is mm -hmm. using. Obviously in this car, we're using like uh, 99 Ron Shell V power. Yep. And that definitely impacts the power and torque. Then obviously dynoing a car, it's only like a snapshot of the performance. Yep. So, you can only really compare dyno graphs like back to back. So dyno graphs that are in like different operating conditions, different car health, like stuff like that, you can't really compare them. But yeah, yeah. it's a useful um, it's a useful way to compare different cars, mm. but you shouldn't say this is the absolute difference between this car. So yeah, cool. yeah, obviously what we're doing today, that's just a snapshot of this car, these particular conditions after mm. like 600 miles of track day, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. You had so. this on the dyno at like delivery mileage, didn't you? Yeah, day two. I <laughs> <Had to be laughs> love done. it. Because obviously for, for customers and stuff like that, we need to um, get ready, um, like go through all the processes and stuff like that. Like for the dyno, we need to turn a few things off to make sure like the crash assist and stuff like that doesn't come on. Yep. Um, so basically it's just getting to grips with these cars before we start working on customers' cars. Gotcha. So we can just hit the ground running basically. Awesome. Well, let's have a little bit of a walk around because obviously it's finished in the best color, lapis the blue. The fastest color. The fastest color. Yeah. Um, so obviously lapis blue, blue's the fastest color. Obviously they do white, they do black. 
Um, that's actually the only option that we've gone for on this car. Obviously, yep. you've got like the wheels, you've got the performance pack, you've got the acro. We didn't go for any of that. Um, I do regret not ordering the performance pack, um, mm -hmm. like with the like Nurburgring mode, drift mode, stuff like that. It looks like the rear diff or the rear axle is the same as yeah. um, the Nurburgring cars. So maybe there's like a little software tweak we can do to the car to get that. Um, but yeah, so obviously standard wheels, standard tires, um, standard brakes. Like I said before, the brakes are a decent upgrade um, from the Mark 7. So yeah, are, on track, are. usually on the Mark 7, you would come to the limit of the car for like a couple of hours, something like that, especially if you're heavy on the brakes. But we were like heavy on the brakes for a good two hours and there's yeah. still plenty of life left in them. They're big brakes to be yeah, fair. Yeah, pedal didn't go away. I think they're 365 mil. For day, stock brakes, like that. that's not so bad at all. I might be wrong, but I hope I'm right. <laughs> well, they, they look pretty big to be fair. Yeah, yeah. 18 inch wheels as well, like you yeah, said, standard 18, wheels. 18 inch wheels all around. Um, obviously this is a factory wheel. You can see that it's like a development from the Mark 7 style, mm, yeah. um, which I didn't notice immediately, but after spending a bit of time around you definitely sort of like notice that it's obviously an evolution it looks mm. like initially it's quite like a step away from it but once you spend some time with it it becomes yeah. quite familiar um, so yeah and then at the back we've still got the um, standard exhaust system on here at the moment we didn't go for the Acura mm -hmm. do kind of regret it it's about three <laughs> and a half grand something like that um, but I mean We've had tons of customers booking already for our like Miltech um, exhaust and stuff like that. Yeah. The standard exhaust actually sounds pretty good. I thought we were going to be completely underwhelmed by it, but you still get like some nice pops and bangs oh, and okay. stuff like that. Oh, that's good. But obviously the tailpipes look a little bit better than what they offered on the Mark 7 as yeah, well. Yeah. So that's nice. Um, I mean, it's cool to see one up close because I haven't mm -hmm. really properly spent some time one of and of course i haven't filmed one either so yeah um, and obviously the interior is completely different as well so yes, you've lost yeah. like all the buttons inside um even on the right hand side all the switch gear is gone it's just like buttons and stuff like that mm. um to turn like esc off you have to go through like the menu and stuff oh is it similar yeah. to the, the gti as well yeah, yeah exactly yeah. so i didn't realize um but a couple of people because i was like struggling to go through like three or four different menus <laughs> to turn the esc off but a couple of people on youtube suggested that you can put like shortcuts in and stuff like oh, that decent, so that's yeah. one of the things to do um obviously yeah the blue interior yeah bit of a controversy around that but i mean i didn't realize that that's why they only come in like three colors like black yeah, white and yeah. blue but that's kind of obviously why because the blue interior is they've um, got to be lapis blue they've yeah, got to yeah. Be lapis blue. 100 percent. wicked yeah. well i think that's a pretty good walk around of the car i think mm -hmm. without further hesitation i think we'll get it on the dyno right yeah absolutely see Just what it makes it all the way up see, there. See what we make. And see how it sounds as well, because if um, if you say that it's got a few little crackles, that'll be uh, interesting It'll to see, great, especially yeah. from an OPF car, so mm -hmm. wicked. All right, let's get fired up and get over to the dyno.
Okay, so a couple of runs done. It actually sounds quite good, you know. You get a few little pops and bangs, which yeah, is quite surprising. saying earlier, wasn't I, that yeah. I was like, quite surprised by the standard of exhaust in this. Yeah. So obviously expecting to get in the car and it'd be completely dead. <laughs> yeah. It actually sounds really good. Yeah, so especially impressed. under load, it's, it's really not too bad at all. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got some graphs up here, which I think you're gonna have to explain to me because it's yeah, all looking sure. very confusing. So, but, um, um, yeah, take it away. We've done it done in the car. We've got two graphs up here. Um, the graph you want to pay attention to for the Mark 8 is the um, solid lines. Red being the horsepower, blue being the torque, and for comparison purposes, to add a little bit more to the video, we've compared it to a Mark 7.5 um, with a GPF. So it's actually the previous year model to this Mark 8, um, and that's the dotted line. So you can see the difference is huge all the way across the rev range. Um, so I mean, this particular car this afternoon, it's making 343 horsepower, um, which is about 30 horsepower over what VW yeah. state. So it's a massive difference. Mm. Um, it's like I was saying earlier to you, I think it might have been off camera, but it feels kind of between like a Mark 7 and a tuned Mark 7.5 in the yeah. GPF yeah. Um, to drive on the road. So when you're driving it, it doesn't really feel like a 300 horsepower car. So maybe okay. this is why. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's making like another 30 horsepower, 25 mm. foot pounds and like a 7.5 with GPF. So I think even if you're jumping in this car from a 7.5, you're gonna feel like a real nice increase. Yeah, definitely. So. And it's a completely different car as well. I mean, they've changed it massively from the 7.5 to the mm -hmm. 8. I mean, even the badge, for example. I mean, yeah, yeah, all the branding's completely changed. Yeah, everything's completely changed. Completely changed. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's decent power, 343 brake. Yep. Not too bad at all. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously this is a development car for you guys here at Regal. Yeah. There's gonna be some stuff going on, I imagine. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I mean, the kind of um, plan? at the moment the ECU's locked. Um, so what that means is we can't really communicate with it. So if we want to tune it, then what we need to do is read the ECU and then we need to be able to uh, um, put information back into it. And at the moment we can't do that. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. what usually happens is that someone figures out how to communicate with the ECU. And as soon as that happens, pretty much every single tuner will be able to tune it yep. at once. But obviously then even then there's like various different degrees of mm. who tunes the cars and stuff like that. Um, so obviously we're like APR dealers, racing line dealers, stuff like that. So we'll probably test out some of their software on this okay. car. Yep. Um, but I mean, even as a standard car, it's got a lot of power, a lot of torque. Um, pretty happy with it the way it is. We're mainly going to focus on like the handling. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we're going to be looking at doing uh, like optimizing suspension, like wheels brakes, um, all that kind of stuff. We'll probably yeah. like intake on it, stuff like that, get it breathing a little bit better. Obviously do the exhaust system as well. Mm -hmm. And obviously one of the things we don't really want to do, especially because the police are cracking down on it quite a bit, is remove the GPFs as well. Yeah. So basically do as much as we can to this car while still keeping it fully road legal. Yeah. Because obviously okay. in the next few years, even at the moment, they're starting to clamp down on it quite a bit. Yeah. We don't really want yeah. our customers to feel like they have to remove the GPF to get more performance from yeah, the car. Yeah, true, yeah. So we're going to try all the different ways to basically do that before mm. you have to mm. basically make your car... Take it to the next stage. Legal. Yeah, exactly. So um, we've got like a couple of um, test days booked at Donington where we're just going to figure out like tyre pressures, um, temperatures, and then from there we can work out like a baseline and figure out what we're going to do like geometry, suspension-wise, awesome. and stuff like that. So. Yeah, really excited to, to put the miles on this. I yeah. think it's going to have quite a hard life. <laughs> it's, probably, it's probably spent more time on the dyno that it has on the road so far. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Actually, so. more time on the track and on the dyno that it has on the road. <laughs> no, yeah, that is true. That is true. <laughs> no, fair play. But well, thanks again for today as well, by the way. Um, no good to catch up as well. And to finally see a market Golf up. But yeah. anyway, I think that's pretty much it for today. 343 break. Mm -hmm not too bad at all. So there it is then folks, the first Market Golf Art video on the channel. Now actually, if plans do go ahead, I will be getting behind the wheel of a Market Golf Art, not this one, another one very, very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I'm really excited to finally have my first drive and get out and do some miles on one of these things because having experienced so many Golf Rs, I don't know what that was, it sounded a bit fruity. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what this thing is like out on the roads and, uh, well, maybe eventually in its modified form. But a big thank you to the guys here at Regal Autosport for taking time out of the day, for getting the car back on the dyno. Uh, it seems to be living on here lately, uh, being their new development car. It's all systems go, trying to do as much as they can um, to kind of get things cracking, really, because so many of these customer cars are now being delivered and therefore people are looking at modification options. Now, for those of you who want to learn more about the guys here at Regal Autosport, I will leave all their contact details down in the description down below. But I think for me today, that is it. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, please do make sure you leave a like and make sure you subscribe for all the adventures still to come. <laughs>